Now today I'm gonna do a flick through, flick through, flick through. I say this every time. I don't know which one it is. Flip through. <laughs> Flipping through a magazine. And it's gonna be one Amiga. I didn't know this back then, but um, I I've came across it recently on the one on eBay. It caught my attention because there is one on eBay, one Amiga. <laughs> There's a one Amiga magazine on eBay, which is like twenty grand or something like this, just for one magazine. I'm just like pee off. And this one is from December issue December ninety two. So, what attracted me to this one? And this, I did not pay 20 grand for this, <laughs> you know, it's not the expensive one, it's you know, fair price. So I got I got this one because super frog, <laughs> you know, I like it. Um, and yeah, just brings me excitement, so I thought, why not? This is more about games, you know, this this the one Amiga. And uh, you know, that's one of the reasons I like it. And one of the good things about this is that, you know, if you are... If you are like, you know, wanting to discover Amiga games um, or anything like this, the one Amiga is the one which, you know, it, it'll talk about games more than anything else. Where the CU Amiga has projects sometimes, it has, you know, again, it does have games, yeah, but it has projects and, and uh, programs and stuff like this. Uh, Amiga format, it has programs, not so much projects, but programs and games and stuff like this, and what's new news and everything, but this one I think it's purely games. Just kind of cool. So let's have a look. Fly to the hottest skies in the Middle East. Believe me, they are the freaking hottest skies. <laughs> Temperature gets ridiculous there. The Chaos Engine. I used to watch my brother play this. Uh, I never played it myself, but I watched him play it. I, n I never knew, it was one of those where I, I could watch him and I liked it, but if I were to play it myself, I wouldn't know where to go or what to do. McDonald's Land. Never heard of this. Is McDonald's Cola okay? The best compilation of all time. Oh, is this the the cartoon um, thingy? My screen team? The cartoon classics, wasn't it? That's what I think I'm looking at this. Yeah, Bart Simpson vs. Space Mutants and you know the pack that came. Unless I'm thinking of something else. No, oh, this is just the compilation. Okay, fair enough. We have Terminator 2, WrestleMania, WWF. That's what it used to be called. Not that I'm into wrestling, I'm really not, but <laughs> I remember now it's like, it was the WWF then, it's WWE now or something. Shadow Worlds. What is this? Intriguing. Okay, that looks good. It looks quite intriguing there. I like the shading effect on this, the lighting in the game. Be worth checking this out. Shadow Worlds. See, that's the thing. I don't even know about this game. I've just discovered it now. Yes, it's Lemmings too. <laughs> I remember when this came out. I was quite excited about it because it was just one one thing that pulled me into the Lemmings too was the music. Um, I still to this day get confused by what some of these functions are. And what the difference between what what them are for? It just feels a bit complicated, but it at the same time intriguing. No. Let's see, see what the first paragraph says. They're back. They're bad, and they're totally bonkers. Those lovable lemmings are back at long last in the eagerly awaited sequel, a game which should come as surpri come as a surprise for those who were expecting. If we may borrow a phrase from the pythons, something completely different. I remember seeing this on um, on TV actually. It was one of these Games World or Games Master or whatever it is. I remember seeing it on one of these and it was telling, it was about um, games. No, it wasn't that, it was the, um, what was it called? 
the ITV one, I think. But anyway, I saw it and I and I was just like, wow! I was getting, I was all excited. I was in the neighbor's house. I remember that because um, I came to mine. Uh, I came home from school, and everyone was out. So the the neighbors, you know, said, "Okay, we'll, we'll um, let you stay here until your parents come home." So that was cool. Well, they arranged it with my parents anyway. Turbo Touch 360. Never heard. Be gentle with me. I've never heard of this pad before. Better graphics, better sound, better software, better get one. That is, that is the Commodore uh, CD TV. Other than it looking like a cool setup, I just saw no point of it. It was just like an Amiga 500 with CD-ROM. Literally, I don't think there was anything better about it. Same with the CD32, as much as I love the CD32, they could have done way more with it than they did. And just literally 1200 with a CD-ROM drive and just like stuck it in one little console package. No. I don't think that was enough. You should have done a bit more with it. But then I think it was it was times of desperation. Yes, this games master, wasn't it? Ever wanted to actually meet the games master? Shake hands with Dominic Diamond. Was that Games Master? Yes it was. I'm thinking of Games World. That's the other one. With that freaking big boy Barry wherever the frick he's called! <laughs> Yeah, that was Games World. It was on Sky One because we had cable and we remember <laughs> it being on there. But this, this is Games Master with the Sky. Apparently, in in really didn't know much about games. <laughs> Everyone thought he was the Games Master. But literally, himself, he had no interest in games. Apparently, <laughs> didn't know much. But I remember hearing about how to do Amiga Worlds. Sorry, Amiga Worlds. But I would do another world uh, level 2 on Amiga via this. I learned how to do that. Like swing the cage and then go there and go there and so forth. And it's kind of cool that people used to like write in and ask about this stuff. Super Frog! My goodness. It's my feel good game. And not, not that many people seem to like it. Which is kind of like a surprise. Because I thought it was pretty nice. It's a pretty good game. I used to, oh, you know what I used to do? I've completed this so many times. I used to, uh, Friday nights, and obviously the weekend, you know, just started the weekend. What I used to do is just like get a, get some snacks, get a bowl of fruit, like complete bowl, and just like spend the entire night from like 10 o'clock at night all the way to like, I don't know, 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning, just playing Super Frog from start to end. Sensible soccer. I remember my brother used to play this, uh, and I used to, I used to always ask him. He was too young then. I used to always ask him, why are they kicking around a screwed up piece of paper? And then I realized it's a ball. <laughs> he just used to completely ignore me, so that my question was never answered. I used to be like, why are they, why are they kicking around a screwed up piece of paper? He just never answered. So for ages I thought it was a screwed up piece of paper until I got that weird magic eye effect where it suddenly turned into a ball of <laughs> football. What in the world is going on here? Why do these joysticks look even dodgier than normal ones? <laughs> okay, well those stuff be my tracks, well maybe my friend was onto something then. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I don't want to. I don't want to hold Batman's joystick, <laughs> or no, definitely not Bart Simpson's joystick. <laughs> His yellow joystick. <laughs> anyway, the wildest compilation pack of all times. It's the same one: Pit Fighter, WrestleMania, WWF, and Final Fight thing.
don't know, it's not in the, either one of these. I say it appeals to a certain... Oh, Mr. Songwriter. Who is this? I bet you that you've heard this, heard of this man. Or rather, you've heard of something by him. Richard Joseph has been responsible for the oral tapestry in many of the Amiga's biggest releases over the past few years, including Sensible Soccer, Speedball 2, Megalomania, and Rather Excellent Gods. Seeing as though, yeah, that's pretty good soundtrack for Gods. Actually, a lot of these are this. Speedball 2's got a good one. Seeing as how he's involved with so many games, we decided that with high time, your good selves were introduced to the man behind the music. So then, dear readers, put your hands together and then sort of slap them with each other as we present for you Mr. Richard Joseph. Simon Byron is your chat show host. Okay, nice. Something nice for me to read later on. It's like reading about musicians. And some mud crazed freak. Amiga 1200, the dream machine. Tell me about it. Even though it could have been more than it is. But still. It was a dream machine. It's the machine they've all been speculating about. But at least it's but at last it's here. In fact, the new Amiga 1200 should be in the shops as you read this. What can it do? What does the software industry think about it? What are its chances against the consoles? And perhaps the most important, what price is it? David Upchurch. Roof. Roving reporter found out. Okay, this feels good to read about. Okay, started reading about it now. <laughs> it'll, it'll take ages. The video will be too long if I started reading. Amiga 12. Ooh, Clash of the Titans. Amiga 1200 versus Atari Falcon. Atari Falcon is one which I've been very curious about because it's it's pretty beefed up. I'm. Um, you know, it's quite a shame that it didn't get out there. It appears that Commodore see the um, Amiga 1200 appealing. Hey? It appears that Commodore see the Amiga 1200 appealing in their near future, at least, to the uh, to the enthusiast. I should finish reading the sentence. Enthusiast sector of the market, i.e., the tinkerers and coders which places it into direct competition with the recently un unveiled Atari Falcon. Although the Falcon's technical specifications are marginally superior to the Amiga 1200, especially in the sound department, its 499, ooh, 500 pound price, pr price makes it precisely 100 pounds more expensive than the A1200. More importantly, Frank Falcon software for... Eh? Fal? software for seems very slow coming. Is it me or does that not make sense? Anyway, compare that to the enthusiastic way the major software developers are throwing their support behind the Amiga 1200 and there should be no doubt as to as to the likely winner of this high-tech battle. I mean, as much as I, the Amiga 1200 is my favorite computer, and it's my favorite of the Amigas, um, but I still would have liked to see what the Falcon does, you know, I'm not one of these, it's just like, oh yeah, Amiga won and destroyed everything else. You know, I'm more the, I wanted to see what everyone else did as well, you know, not just about. Goblins 2, the gruesome two. Never played this, never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, I said this was completely about games. This is about hardware as well. I thought it was about games, just about games. There's a bit more to it. And there's obviously a musician here. I forgot, I thought I was reading like Amiga Format for a second then. Or CU Amiga or something. But wow. No, it's not just games. Stand corrected. But there is more game oriented, as you can see all the reviews for games here. Legends of Valor. Looks interesting. Though I tend not to get into the adventure games too much. 
It's one of those where I'd prefer watching someone else play. It's like Dungeon Master. I absolutely love the game, but I'd get lost if I played it myself. I tend to like like enjoy watching somebody else play or play with somebody along with somebody. But it's absolutely amazing. Uh, Dungeon Master is so atmospheric. I love it. The feeling it gives you. BC Kid. I remember this. Uh, my brother got both BC Kid and Super Frog at the same time. And I remember these two being the new games in our household. Um, he must have like, he must have like borrowed them of somebody using Xcopy. So, <laughs> and that's I remember both playing uh, playing both of them, and I loved both of them. Did I do a camp and not started on a BC kid? I can't remember. I think I did. It was a very long time ago. The channel like first started in the older nostalgia times. Maybe it's time for a revisit. What is this? This looks interesting. Review. Would the Amiga still put out a really decent motorbike racer to call its own? Can. what? Can Thalion's much. what? Vo Thalion's much vaunted effort fit the bill? Gary Weta gets the gets his mortar running or something. It reminds me of um, Thingy. Uh, Fury of the Furries. Looks, ex looks. I mean, the sprites look. Like that. Do you hear from those wacky French fun funsters across La Manche? That well, just uh, am I reading English? <laughs> Is the is the Nui from those wacky French funsters across La Manche at Loriciel? Okay, I was half reading French. Just a rehash of old Amiga puzzler ideas or a revolution in brainstorming concepts? You may as well ask, as did Simon Byron. Mini <laughs> office! I remember this! It was bad! <laughs> I don't know, I just didn't see it of any use. I remember it, that's the memory I have of it anyway. Maybe I didn't give it much of a chance. But it just seemed the word processor at least just seemed a bit basic. But there comes a time in a man's life when he sits back, takes stock and thinks I could really do with an updated, slightly wonky version of Arcanoid. Simon Barron was doing just that when along about Bounced bunny bricks. Okay, interesting. Can I have a look at that? Bunny bricks. BC kid. I love this. Oh, Bill's Tomato Game. I remember playing the. Um, I like the music for this. I, I remember playing this. This was a strange one because it doesn't feel like a Psygnosis game. As in, you know, you'd expect something like Lemmings or, some, or something like this, but no, it was. It was pretty good as well. It's an interesting puzzle. Spellbound Dizzy. I wasn't like that much into the Dizzy collection. I'm mostly into Treasure Island Dizzy. That was the only one I played and completed. But yeah, the rest of them, no, not so much. Again, Rodland, Microdisc. That's another one I played quite a bit. That's um, Robocod. I don't know, there's something about that game that I just like, I played for hours. Kind of like it, it pulls you in, it just has this way of pulling you in. Zool. Zool's a funny one. It's it's one of those where I used to enjoy I I like it, but it it hurts my hand when I play it. <laughs> but the thing is that's because when you play on joystick it hurts your hand and that I'll tell you which part hurts your hand. It's what is this? Putty. Oh okay. 
I think which part hurts your hands so, you know when you're climbing the wall when you're climbing the walls and you're going like this and you're kind of climbing like that that's the part that hurts when you're going like this one thing I realized is you know when I tried the CD32 version of Zool and um, obviously I don't have the official CD32 band I've never tried it and uh, from what I've heard from many people I'm not missing much um, except a lot of freaking pain in the neck and uh, some really cheap ass pad but <laughs> what, what I noticed is uh, what I did was I played uh, I used the PlayStation I had the PlayStation adapter so I used the PlayStation pad as a CD32 pad and when I used the analog stick on Zool oh my goodness I started really liking the game because it just felt easier on the analog stick way way much way more easier on the analog stick so yeah try that Zool on the analog stick with that with that Amiga 2 PlayStation adapter Buddy. I remember playing this game Silly Buddy. With this. Because I know there's two. I know there's Silly Buddy and Putty Squad. I'm not actually not sure. I've been told they're the same thing. But Silly Buddy, I remember it being like a title which um, was which came in like a pack for the 600. Like same in the same way as Pushover. You know, it was like a, it came in the 600, Amiga 600 pack pushover and also silly buddy so I remember that but um, putty squad is what I saw what I see on the Amiga 1200 or the CD32 so I don't know if it's the same or why but Wizkid this is I remember playing this and I remember spending a lot of time playing Wizkid but it's a very strange game it's got some bizarre elements to it. I mean it's supposed to be um, a sequel to Wizball. Wizball I think was one of those games that's like better on the Commodore 64 apparently but um, I didn't play it too much. It's not the easiest of games so when I was little I didn't get on with it too much but it's alright. The Wizkid is interesting. It's just odd. That's all. I have another game of it. Actually I may do a nostalgia time. I'll remember to put that in my list. Just to show what it's like. Kind of way to start doing the Star Times game. Not I the Beholder. These are showing maps of places on my video. The maps of the snip tips. What is this for? Ooh, parasol stars. I love that. Switchblade 2 is another really good game. It's another where. I got addicted to it, this one here, and I like the um, the color palette which they use in Switchblade 2. It's really nice. Actually, it's kind of like my nails, the the tealy, the teal and orangey kind of thing. I really, I like that combination, teal and orange, or blue and orange, or something like this. And you got the Amiga 600 pack. Let's have a read what it says about it. The new Amiga 600 uses state-of-the-art surface mount technology for maximum reliability and features a 3.5 floppy drive, mouse, TV modulator and smart card slot all as standard. Didn't they all have floppy drive as freaking standard? Anyway, the innovative smart card slot accepts games. What? The innovative smart card slot accepts games, ROM or RAM. I've never heard of any games going into the PCMCI slot. So first I'm hearing that. Oh, RAM cards from 1 megabyte up to 4 megabyte. And will take advantage of many new future developments. The very latest version of the operating system, Kickstart Workpoint, uh, Kickstart Workpoint, <laughs> Kickstart Workbench 2.0. 05 is used in the Amiga 600 and its enhanced chipset facilities include improved graphics resolution, increased genlock support, and a facility for up to 2 megabytes of chip memory. It obviously only came up with 1 megabyte of chip memory, exactly like the Amiga 500 Plus. I personally think that they should have had 2 megabytes of memory off the bat, and the Amiga 
1200 should have had like, you know, like four megabytes or something. Rather than just the same one megabyte as its predecessors. The freaking Amiga 500 had one megabyte, well, it had half a meg. But a lot of them came with the, the extra expansion, the 512k expansion. So, but yeah, 500 plus had one megabyte chip off the bat. But the thing is, I make a 600 at 1 megabyte of chip off the bat. Should have just had 2. So, yeah, it's a bit weird. I will take it for, and I think it should have had, um, like, at least an 010, 68,010, at least. It's still 68,000 processor, same as the 500 plus and 500. Only jump was um, Amiga 1200 with um, 68,020, which to be honest, I think should have started off with 68,030. You know, so it's I don't know. It's just very. As much as I love Amiga Commodore, Commodore's decisions with them were a bit off. Anyway, uh, two megabytes of chip memory. The Amiga 600 is fully compatible with the. A670 CD-ROM drive and interface which will give it access to a full range of CDTV titles and audio CDs. The Amiga 600 is available from Silica in several configurations. See a special 2 megabyte RAM upgrade, optional extra. Oh, Cubic, which, which cover discs did this have? I'm thinking of another thing, because Cubic came on the cover disc of CU Amiga as well. No, that's another one of my favorite um, cover discs because it's got quite a few good games on there. Rush Hour, yeah, I remember this as well. Was it Rush Hour? Yeah, it was Rush Hour. It had that mod which I like. I think it was Rush Hour. No, I'm thinking of Claude's Runner. It's the same type of, you know, Rush Hour type of game. It's basically like a Frogger. You know, you go across. Trailblazer. I remember this game. It looks easy and nice to play, but it's it's not <laughs> easy. It's nice to play, but it's not easy. Jump and roll. Iridium too. Iridium is really good. Maybe even doing a, a thingy on that. Oh, these citizen um, color dot metrics printers. I really wish I had one of these. Color dot metrics printer. That'd have been cool. I mean, I'm sure there was slow and everything, but still, it'd be nice to have the citizen ones. Recommended Zipstick Pro, 1295. Wow. 1295 Zipstick Pro. Repaired so many of them. I still need to repair a couple of mine. Just need new microchips. But I've got quite a few. Ishar Hoy. Hoy's good. The music of it. Fire and Ice, of course. I like Fire and Ice. There we go. This was One Amiga, December 92. Super Frog and Super Amiga. <laughs> so, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this uh, flip through. Thanks so much for your likes, your shares. Do check out my other videos. Do leave your thoughts in your comments. Blah, blah, blah. Do leave your thoughts <laughs> below in the comments. For now, I will say adios. <laughs>